I, I, I got a very, very basic question. If you got signed in the end of the 90s, from 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, you're eating. You're eating. You're on projects. You might fight to get on these projects, but you're on projects. You're earning money. When exactly did things just go left? When did you decide I want out? Or when were you actually dropped? It was when, right, it was when I, when I was going into the office and I was going into the bad boy office and I was I was talking to them more about my deal. Like, um, well, I wanted to go to the studio in Atlanta. I wanted to, you know, have them pay for the studio time. I wanted to go do a mix a song or something. Or I got songs that I'm working for, or working on with producers that, you know, the producers aren't getting paid. So they was like, you know, it, it, it was hard for me to do business. I was working with producers that was asking me about, you know, when they're going to get their money. You understand? Like a producer gets paid. So they, they wasn't, none of that was happening. So I would go to the label and talk to them about that. And that's when I had been going in the office so long talking to Francesca and we became pretty cool friends. And she told me, I'm going to be honest with you. You don't have a recording budget. And that was just it. I was like, all right. So then that's when I knew. I said, okay, that's when I said to Puff. I said, either we're going to fix it or I'm going to write a book and I'm going to get my publishing another way. And I kept telling him, this is what I'm going to do if we didn't figure out some kind of way, right? And the way that we were supposed to figure out never happened. Then you got to also remember that the people, a lot of my friends that I had that I was signed to to the label, sometimes they would call Puff and, 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 and make some really harsh threats sometimes at the whole label just by the way the business was going and that played a, a big part in why puff was like you know what i feel like dealing with you is cause your it's a problem i'm having problem with your friends you understand they calling me making these threats out of that da. so why don't you talk to your partners i'll be like yo don't call up to the office no more and make no more threats like that because it's gonna make business hard so that's that a lot of that stuff played in what happened with my career over there, bad boy? You know, it wasn't like I'm going to drop you because you're not good. I, it might have been like I'm going to drop you because your friend keeps calling up here threatening me. Again, Mark, you knew for some time, you know, Puff didn't believe in you as an artist. So now on top of him not believing in you as an artist, you have friends calling a label and they're making threats. Right, but then, but, but then when we say he didn't believe in me as an artist, I didn't believe in him as a boss. So it goes both ways. It's not a way that he can pass. Like, if he passed a judgment on me, I'm going to pass one on him, no matter how much money he got, no matter what. If, again, if I wrote a song for you and I made you hot, you can't tell me nothing about making myself hot. So I didn't believe in him as a boss. As the same you didn't believe in didn't, him. You didn't, didn't believe in him as a boss in which way? In the way that, because if if, if 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 he didn't believe in me as an artist, then I didn't believe in him as a boss. That's what I'm saying. And, that, and what I mean by that, that means that you're not able of making good decisions for me as, as an artist. Like, it was times when they said they didn't know how to market me. They didn't know what to do. You know, like when they want to give you a gimmick. And they just didn't understand. I think I was just a little bit ahead of my time. If you ask me, I was way ahead of my time. Right, it was hard for them to understand me. Even with all the okay. music I did, yeah. You, 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 you came out on that um, uh, "Bad Boy for Life" single. Mm -hmm. Did that change anything for you in terms of the label saying, "Yo, we got to pay closer attention to this guy"? Nah, even when people was like, "Yo," um, when they listened to the song. And they was like, yo, the dude on the third verse was the, he's the hot that he made the song hot, and that was me. That's not what Puff wanted to hear. If you ask me at the time, you know what I'm saying? Because he wanted to be hot, or or, or you know, it's like Mark Curry is hot. And obviously, if I was hot, then I would be the next rapper that you would probably want to focus on putting the album out on, right? But after Bad Boy for Life, that's when they did. I need a girl. You know, Bloom did the album after after. Uh, bad boy for life right 
And if I was hot and I was on Bad Boy for Life and the, and the world knew I was hot, I didn't even get an album then. It went to Loom. All right. So, and again, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. My memory might not be 100%. Bad Boy for Life came out. It was a mega hit. Right. That record was, was damn near the record that brought P. Diddy back, you know, once he started getting cold out there. Right. That record put Bad Boy back on the map, and it put him as an artist back on the map. Right. That right. record had Puff. It had Puff. It had you, and it had Black Rob, correct? Correct. All right. Black Rob still... Got an album that came out. His album. He didn't came just out get an. He didn't, hear me out. He didn't just get one al- album. He got a second album. So I, I don't was it know on that Bad it's Boy? personal. Was it, Excuse was me. It, was his second album on Bad Boy? Or was it on the other label he went to? No, it was on Bad Boy. Really? Okay. Yeah, he has, on, two, he has two albums on Bad Boy. Right. And before before the first album I was on. So when we when we say the first round of Bad Boy. Versus the second round, which was Loon and Deppenham, I was around the first one too, because that's when okay, we did. So that's when we did all of the Black Rob songs. That's when Muscle Game and all that came into play. That's when Biggie was still living, right? That's when the Locks, Craig Mack, all of that was still going around. So I was around from that. One. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.